Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ben. I'm a photographer and videographer based in North Wales. Today we're checking out a couple of things you wouldn't necessarily associate with photography, but as a self-employed, sole trader, photographer, videographer, as any of you might know, if you're in the same field, we do all of the work. I am the photographer, videographer, photo and video editor. I do the marketing, I do the accounting, the admin, everything. So when it comes to keyboards, it's quite important that I have the right fit for me because I spend a lot of time using that keyboard. So for the last year or so, I've been using a iMac, which is actually in that big box down there. Unfortunately, I'm having to sell it because of the way things have gone this year with the wedding industry. I'll leave the eBay link down below if anyone's interested. So for most of that time, I've been using the Apple Magic Keyboard. It's a decent keyboard. I have used them before as well. I used to have one with my old MacBook Pro desk setup with external monitor and stuff. And generally speaking, they're pretty good. But obviously now that I'm selling the iMac, this is going as well with the iMac. So I've had to start looking around for something else. There's nothing stopping me just picking up another one of these Magic Keyboards. I've had no real complaints about it, but I thought I'd have a look, see what else is out there. And I think I might have found the best keyboard for me. This is the Logitech MX Keys. So in the past, when I had my old MacBook Pro desk setup before this one, I actually originally bought a Logitech Craft keyboard. It looked all fancy and promising with its special customizable dial and all of that, but I had nothing but issues with it, mainly being connectivity. It was constantly disconnecting. Half the time when I plugged my MacBook in, switched the keyboard on, it just would not be able to find the MacBook Pro, which meant that I had to then take the MacBook out, open it up, to time a password in, go through, try and reconnect it, finally get it working, and then I can close it up, get back to work. But it was just doing it so often, I gave up on it, I sold it, and that's why I actually bought a Magic Keyboard that time. But saying that, it was a very nice typing experience on that keyboard, which is what you mainly do on the keyboard. And I started seeing some reviews pop up about this one, so thought I'd give it a go. I will have affiliate links for both these keyboards in the description down below. So, some comparisons. To start with, what's in the box? With the Apple Magic Keyboard, obviously this is the numeric pad version. I am pretty much always gonna get a numeric pad on my keyboards, because I am doing like invoices and all that sort of stuff, so I do find it handy having the number pad there. In the box with the Magic Keyboard, you get the Magic Keyboard and a lightning cable. That's it, really. And then with the MX Keys, you get the MX Keys keyboard, as well as a USB Type-C charging cable, and one of Logitech's proprietary unifying receivers. In terms of connectivity, with the Magic Keyboard, you just plug in the lightning cable to your computer, and then that's it. You're paired, certainly on a Mac anyway. You can then either carry on charging it if you need to, or you can just unplug it almost immediately, and it's paired through Bluetooth. You're working wirelessly straight away. It's pretty great. And then with Logitech, I actually prefer to use the unifying receiver that they provide for you, but you can also just connect through Bluetooth as you would with any other keyboard. The difference being on this one, you can pair up to three different devices and have them assigned to hotkeys. For example, I can use number one for the MacBook Pro, I can use number two for my Mac Mini, and I can use number three for my iPad. That is certainly one of the big selling features about this keyboard, just the fact that you can have one keyboard and seamlessly switch between devices. So whether you're like me, using multiple computers for different sorts of work, or maybe you have a 
work computer and the home computer then yeah you can just use the same keyboard switch between them at your own leisure. So design really it's not a big thing for me I don't really care too much what my keyboard looks like if it's nice to use and it does the job well for me then that's all I really care about but because this is YouTube and everyone loves desk setup videos obviously the Apple Magic Keyboard it's very Apple <laughs> it's simple it's clean it's a very low profile and because of that even though there's a little bit of flex to it when you're using it it will be completely flat on whatever desk or table you're using so there is absolutely no flex in it at all the keys are pretty much perfect squares slightly rounded at the edges this is the silver version with the white keycaps the standard version that you get with an iMac you can also buy the space grey version with black keycaps there's one single port right in the middle for your lightning cable and your tiny little power switch at the top this is the design that they've been going with since 2015 they did a slight revision in 2017 which is where they also introduced the number pad but otherwise they've not really needed to do anything else to it and then the Logitech there are also two versions of this keyboard this is the standard MX keys there is also the MX keys for Mac personally I would say to anyone regardless what operating system you're on just go for the standard version the only main differences are the color this is a much darker sort of closer to space grey with the black keycaps and then the version 4 Mac is a lighter silver again with the black keycaps as well as the main command buttons down the bottom left here on the version for Mac it is just the Mac commands that are labelled on there and if you want to use it with a Windows computer it actually reverses the alt and start buttons which can get quite confusing so if you're someone who uses both Mac and Windows computers go for this one I only have Mac computers but I do actually run Windows through Boot Camp so yeah this is very handy for me if wise design wise you can see that the caps are slightly more rounded and the actual number and letter keys they have a slight dimpling which we'll get onto later in terms of build quality there is a little bit of flex in there but it is about I'd say at least twice the weight of the Apple keyboard this top base of the MX keys is very heavy and coupled with the very nice rubber feet on the bottom this has never moved an inch since I've been using it on both of these keyboards you get much the same in terms of the media and control buttons along the top there although on the Logitech MX you can also customize a few of them at the top and one major improvement that the MX keys has over the Magic Keyboard backlighting there are proximity sensors built into this keyboard so as soon as your hand goes anywhere near the keyboard it lights up so you can see it you can see what you're doing in the dark some might argue that when you're in front of a computer screen you don't necessarily need backlighting to see what you're doing but it's very handy why Apple don't do it I don't know especially for the price that they're asking they obviously have the technology because they do it in all of their MacBooks so yeah typing experience of these two the MX keys is far nicer to actually type on especially for extended periods of time it may come as a surprise to you that a photographer videographer spends a lot of time during the week typing whether it's emails to clients or suppliers or anything like that to writing scripts for YouTube videos I spend a lot of time typing on keyboards the Magic Keyboard has done me well for the last year I thought it was a really nice keyboard to use to be fair especially seeing as I was just used to typing on MacBooks it felt very familiar to me but having then used the Logitech Craft when it worked and now using the MX Keys it is so much nicer to use this is obviously personal preference everyone's going to be 
different in this respect and it's not really something you can relate to unless you actually go into a store somewhere and try it. But the main thing with the MX keys for me is the dimpled keys. As opposed to the very flat keys of the Magic Keyboard, your finger just naturally moves towards the center of the key into that dimple, which means that I'm never really missing a key. My hit rate is far greater. It's far more comfortable for extended periods of time. There's a little more key travel compared to the Magic Keyboard and it just feels nicer. I think the keys just have a slightly dampened feel to them, especially just towards the bottom of the press, whereas the Magic Keyboard is a little bit harder, clickier, not clicky as in mechanical keyboard, but you know what I mean. And that brings us on to sound. How does it sound to type on? I don't quite get it myself, but apparently it's a big thing for a lot of keyboard buyers. Personally, when I'm sitting down writing away, I'm by myself, there's no one else here. So noise in terms of how it's affecting other people is not an issue for me. But regardless, here's a couple of quick sound tests. They're both the same microphone in the same position, same volume. See what you think. So as I mentioned in the typing experience, I did mention that the Magic Keyboard felt a little clickier and that the MX keys felt like the keys were slightly more dampened. I think they're not really far off the same volume, but the Apple Magic Keyboard, you just notice that little bit more because of that more clicky nature to it. In terms of battery life, they're comparable really. On the Apple website they claim for the numeric pad version that you'll get a month or more battery life. So yeah I'll take their word for it. And with the MX keys it depends on whether you're using the backlighting or not. If you're using backlighting they say up to 10 days. If you're not using backlighting they say up to five months or more. Personally I can't really attest to any of those claims. Being a photographer and videographer, I'm in a very good habit of, as soon as I come in from wrapping a shoot, I put everything on charge straight away. And the same with my phone or AirPods, anything like that. I just never want to be caught out by a dead battery. <laughs> so I'm constantly keeping my things topped up, which also goes for keyboards and mice. So I have personally never run out of battery on any keyboard I've ever owned. So yeah, be like me. And finally, we get to the price. So the Apple Magic Keyboard plus numeric pad. This version, the silver version, the standard iMac version, this will cost you £130. Or you can get the space grey one with black keys for the iMac Pro. That can cost you £150. In contrast, the Logitech MX Keys, whether you buy this standard version or the version for Mac, they both cost £100. And then there is also an option to add a palm rest for another £10, but good luck finding that. I've seen them sold out everywhere recently. In fact, I did very well to get this one on Amazon. There was only one left when I found it. And as I mentioned before, I would advise just going for this standard version over the for Mac version because you then still have the ability to use it normally in Windows as well as any other device you have. So overall, which of these two keyboards would I recommend? MX Keys, hands down. It's quieter with a nicer typing experience as well as the multiple connectivity options. It looks great if that's important to you and it's cheaper, a fair bit cheaper 
than the Magic Keyboard. So there we are, this is our winner, the Logitech MX Keys. I am very happy, very happy with this keyboard so far, which I'm very glad about because this one is going to a new home soon anyway. So there we go. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope that it maybe shed some light on some key features if you're looking at both of these keyboards. If you are interested in either of them, I will have affiliate links down below. If you do use those links, I might get a few pennies, which would greatly help this channel keep going. So thank you in advance. And if anyone's interested to see the rest of my brand new desk setup, then stay tuned. Be sure to hit subscribe because I will be releasing that very soon. Do give this video a like if you liked it. Drop a comment down below if you've got any other suggestions or thoughts on these keyboards. And then otherwise, thank you again. Be good, stay safe, I'll see you in the next video.